Hi, and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Brendan. Today's episode, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to half jokingly call it "So You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader," because this concept, this mathematical concept, is a very important concept to really wrap your head around when it comes to the market. So let's jump right in. Um, this one will probably be a little bit shorter than my other ones, um, just simply because it's a pretty simple concept, but a very important one, as I mentioned, um, to, to be aware of. So let's uh, take a look at the markets. You've already seen this chart a number of times. I've shown this chart to, to uh, people um, in my meetings, but also um, in this Coffee with Brendan series. Um, this is what the market has done since the year 1996. And so you see that it peaked in March of 2000, went down 49%, bottomed out at 777 in October of 2002, took five years to recover, but it did recover 100%. And then from October 2007 to March 2009, it went down another 57%. And then it came back, it came back in 2012. So we've already gone through this, that these are two of the, two of the most uncomfortable times, at least in my career, and certainly in recent history that people um, can remember and, uh, and and probably don't remember very fondly. <laughs> um, but the, the key here is that when the market goes down, the market doesn't come back the same amount. So like you see here, the market went down 49% and came back 100%. Usually when people say, you know, when people think about this, they say, oh, well, the market went down 49, it comes back 49. That's not the case. And this is just simple math. So let's just uh, switch gears and go to an Excel spreadsheet, one of my favorite things in the whole world, um, and take a look at why this actually is. So if we go here, this is 2009 to 2000, uh, excuse me, 2007 to 2009. And what this is pretty much saying is that between 2007, 2009, it's the market started, market being S&P 500, at 1565, it went down 800 points to 677. So if you just simply take that 880, 888 and divide that into the original number, the market dropped 57%. So it, but it doesn't come back 57%, it came back 131%. So how is that? Well, if we start at 677 and we ended it, that original number 1565, and it still changed 888, the difference here is that your, your starting point is now 677. So again, going back to our fifth grade algebra, or not even algebra, math class, um, when you're calculating percent differences, you have to base it off of the start number, not on the bigger number. And so therefore, you're now talking about it, it growing 888 points off of the 677, which works out to 131%. Long story short, when the market goes down 57%, the market comes back 131%. And so if we just take a look at where we are today, very sneaky, I hid that one. Um, this is where we are right now. So if you believe that the market will come back, and that's the key here, if you believe the market will come back, then this is where we started at the beginning of the year, January, 47.97. And it has ended, or at least I should say, as of September 30th, uh, 2022, the market is down 1,200 points. And so similarly, if we say, from, if it dropped 1,200 points off of that 47.97, you've lost about 25%. Now we don't know, and that's where the big question marks are here, we don't know when, when or if the market will come back, but again, if history repeats itself and it does come back and it goes from this low that we hit in, on September 30th and comes back to the high that we we're at January, that's a 1200 point gain off of the 3586, which means that there is a 34% rate of return. So why do I bring this up and why is this so important for investors. Well, it's pretty much right here. I'll show you one more thing and I apologize for bouncing around, but um, 
<laughs> this is the limits of my expertise here. So, um, so if we go to this page here, what this is pretty much saying is that just like I said a moment ago, it takes 35% to get back to where we once were 4797. If it took two years, it's a 17% average rate of return on your money over that two year period. And if it takes three years, four years, or even five years, long story short, if you sell out of the market and get into something else, the, you have to compare what the market performance would look like if you just sat tight and stayed there. So if you just sat tight and stayed there and the market came back, you pretty much built in a 35% rate of return. If you move it somewhere else, it has to make more than 35% over that same time frame in order for that move to be a better move for you. And so it, again, it's, it's just a key, key investment concept. And so another way of looking at this is, okay, let's say that you have a bunch of cash that's just sitting around. You know, and I have clients that have big chunks of cash sitting around and I'm always uh, trying to get them to put it into the market. And especially now because the market right now is down. And if the market just simply comes back to where it was January of this year, you're baking in some pretty significant rates of return that uh, being in the bank, you just cannot rival. And so again, this one's a short and sweet one, but it's super duper important to realize that if you just simply sit tight and the market comes back, like it has 100% of the times in the history of this of the market, you're building in some really, really good rates of return. Um, so I would make the argument that it would be very challenging to find a better rate of return than what you're looking at right here um, by taking money out of the market today and putting it into something else. Or conversely, if you have cash that's just sitting around or, you, or you've been waiting, 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 waiting to put money into the market because the market was has been so high for the last several years. Well, again, this is the type of rate of return that that's built in. And if we go back to um, you know the original chart that I was looking at, look at the rates of return that the market experience. And again, I went through this in a, in a prior coffee with Brendan, but if you look at this, you know, this is where we once were. This would have been a great, great time to have invested because your money, if you had put cash in on March 9th, 2009, it would have experienced a four times multiple over the 12 years from 2008 when you would have put the money in to where it peaked, at least initially right before COVID in February. And that's that 400% rate of return. This is all math. So I'm not making any kind of, I'm not sticking my head out on this one at all. I'm not saying that the market is coming back, but if it does, like it has 100% of the time, you're looking at some pretty significant rates of return by either sitting tight and not making any uh, panic moves or two, taking money that's sitting on the sidelines or sitting in some kind of dormant um, investment and putting it into the market at this time. So again, short and sweet, don't have too much more for today on this uh, kind of dreary Tuesday that we're looking at today, but at least it's not snowing here in uh, Massachusetts as it is in uh, some parts of the country right now on October 18th, which is the date that I'm actually shooting this. So hope you have a great day and uh, look forward to the next time we chat. Take care.